empty, endless, lifeless. In man's primitive form, we could not survive the Arctic. Dogs became our greatest allies. They're our eyes and ears, our strength and stamina. Our closest connection to a wild and unforgiving nature. The occupation of the Arctic is one of the most spectacular human achievements. To survive here, man relied on his cooperation with the species that is far more than just a best friend. Conditions are too extreme for either man or dog to survive alone. But together, they have become native to the vast white expanses. Paleo-Eskimo people first came here from East Siberia 6,000 years ago. To do this, they relied on dogs' predatory skills for tracking and retrieving game. When they harnessed the dog's energy to become more mobile, man could truly colonize the Arctic. Gradually, humans made their way east, across the Canadian Arctic, and settled in Greenland. Here, on the planet's largest island, people bred dogs to reach the pinnacle of their performance. In this magical yet unforgiving land, the enduring bond between human and canine goes beyond friendship to total mutual dependence. Each relies on the other for food and protection. With men as their custodians, Greenland dogs have become the ultimate ice dogs. It's February in Atokotormi, a small town 640 kilometers north of the Arctic Circle. As winter draws its last breaths, the community is spurred into motion. Here, life is not organized according to months, but according to seasons. For the town's most important inhabitants, the end of winter brings the end of a long wait. 
Working season is almost upon them. As the dark of winter is about to lift, there's a reminder that survival here is no guarantee. Minus 27 degrees Celsius was too much of a challenge for this new mother. Her puppies have frozen. In the Arctic, the most basic laws of nature apply. Only the strong survive. This is the most isolated community in Greenland and there are few places where humans have a closer connection to the natural world. As the sun returns to the town, it signals the beginning of hunting season. Survival depends on your ability to secure two things. Warmth and food. The majority of people here still depend on hunting for both. Isak and his younger compatriots have been awaiting the first hunt of the season for months. their dogs even more so. Since the onset of last summer, the dogs have been unable to run, chained up on the village outskirts to guard against polar bears, eating only around three times a week. Thorough preparation is essential to survival. And only Isak can make the call when it's time to set out. The team lives to run, and as they shake off the dullness of inactivity, their anticipation is palpable. As one of the oldest breeds in the world, Greenland dogs are celebrated as the pinnacle of high performance and endurance in polar regions. In 1911, Norwegian Roald Amundsen and his team relied on Greenland dogs to beat Englishman Robert Scott to the South Pole. Before heading off, Amundsen spent time in Greenland learning from the Inuit. Scott relied on ponies in his quest, whose coats got drenched in sweat and froze, leaving his men to haul themselves to the pole. When they got there, they found Amundsen had beaten them. The Norwegians returned safely. Scott, tragically, did not. In Amundsen's fatherland, the spirit of polar exploration and adventure lives on. Some, like Hofart, seek out the solitude and adversity of Arctic adventure, following in the footsteps of those who have gone before. The wise learn from their predecessors and work with Greenland dogs. The dogs Hofart works with live a more sheltered life in Norway, but they have the same genes and appetite for activity that Isaacs do. 
They are heading with Hoffart into the Arctic wilderness to push the limits of the speed and efficiency that man and dog can achieve together. Unlike the Greenlanders, whose hunt will guarantee their survival, Hoffart's expedition is for the sake of exploration and adventure itself. On the road to the coast, the heart and mind long for the quiet rustle of snow under a sled. As Amundsen himself said, the greatest factors determining success or failure are the way one equips an expedition, foresees difficulties, and the precautions you take to meet or avoid them. Preparation is everything. The ship Bor eventually slips its mooring in Boda, just north of the Arctic Circle. And the adventure is underway. Fifteen hundred kilometers to the west and three degrees further north, the Greenlandic hunters are also on the move. The fault lines in Isak's face run deep, the markings of time spent in this treacherous environment with his trusty companions. As the team heads out over the frozen tundra, the dogs can finally run, and they take to the task with relish. This is what they were bred to do. Their journey takes them north through Scoresby Sound, one of the largest fjord systems in the world, toward prime hunting ground in the highlands of Jameson Land. Each sled weighs over 700 kilograms, more than double the weight of all the dogs combined. It's a demanding, steady climb. But the pack maintains an average speed of 10 kilometers an hour. Every four hours, the dogs get a well-deserved break. This is crucial to nurturing the human-canine relationship. Any good musher must earn the respect of his team, and this requires an intimate knowledge of their limits and temperaments. The dogs are easy to understand, both when they're happy and when they're not. When called to the task, they charge eagerly forth. It's minus 26 degrees Celsius, and the chill of the rising wind hammers the cold into your core. Still the team presses on, into the bite of an approaching storm. But with conditions worsening, progress eventually comes to a halt. The team takes refuge in a small hunter's cabin. While the dogs hunker down, to wait out the blizzard.
north of Norway, Bor is well underway. Its destination, the polar archipelago, Svalbard, situated between Norway and the North Pole. It follows in the wake of Dutch mariner Willem Barents, who discovered Svalbard in 1596. On the Barents Sea, the dogs have taken to life on deck. There's time to bond with their musher and relax. But this ocean is unpredictable. Recent studies have highlighted huge swells in the seas of the Arctic Circle, which until recently were covered with ice year round. hits, it's a violent ordeal. The dogs are out of their comfort zone, but they come from hardy stock. And their musher is on hand to ensure their safety. New day reveals the ship miraculously intact, but transformed. The dogs emerge gingerly, but unharmed. They are greeted by the vast winter wonderland of the Svalbard archipelago. Over the following days, it's smooth sailing around the coast toward the predetermined landing point. After the perilous journey, the mesmerizing world of Svalbard is a picture of total calm. This is the wild environment the dogs were bred for and it presents a banquet of sights, smells and sounds for their keen senses. Below the ice, walruses can find enough shellfish to fuel their bulk of around 1,200 kilograms. The return of the sun makes for a lazy afternoon. And it's not just walruses enjoying it. A polar bear mother has emerged from her den with her two cubs. They're around three months old and revel in the wonders of their world for the first time. Their cuteness belies their future ferocity. At 700 kilograms, polar bears are the largest terrestrial carnivores. No creature is more at home in the snow and ice. From the safety of the ship, it's possible to approach to a comfortable proximity. But these predators can run at up to 40 kilometers per hour. 
On land, the team will rely on the dog's keen senses to avoid bears at all cost. Man and dog are eager to set their feet on terra firma. But patience is key. As the crew makes its first landing, the light is fading. Unprotected and out in the cold, it's a race against time. The ice edge is prime hunting ground for polar bears, so camp will be made on higher ground. It's knowledge like this that helps keep man and dog safe. Over the thousands of years since we domesticated them, dogs' brains have shrunk by about 20%. While they do the smelling and listening for us, we do much of the thinking for them. As the ship sails, the men are left to their own devices. From now on, they will rely on the dogs to get them to the rendezvous down the coast. Their sudden isolation echoes that experienced by pioneers over a century ago. In 1893, 18 years before Amundsen raced Scott to the South Pole, Norwegian Fridjof Nansen purposefully froze his ship Fram into pack ice. He hoped the currents of the Arctic Ocean would carry him to the North Pole. When it became clear they were drifting in the wrong direction, Nansen and Hjalmar Johansen left the ship to make for the North Pole with sledges, kayaks and 28 dogs. At 86 degrees north, they turned back. It was the closest to the pole anyone had been. Having lost their bearing, they endured more than a year of ultimate survival in extreme conditions. In the summer, they navigated open water by lashing their sledges to their kayaks to form a catamaran. In the winter, they hunkered down to survive the storms. Eventually, they miraculously came upon the expedition of Frederick D. Jackson in Franz Josef Land. The secret to Nansen's success was his ability to innovate under pressure. In Greenland, the dogs wait patiently for relief from the relentless storm. Blizzards here can last days or even weeks. The snowdrift forms a windproof crust around their thick coats. They are well insulated and warm. Thirty-six hours go by before the storm passes. As soon as it's clear, the hunters must depart. There's no time to waste. As they get rigged in, the energy of each dog adds to the collective. Until finally their vigor is unleashed. At minus 36 degrees Celsius, Jameson Land is a brutal and unforgiving place. As the team pushes to a higher altitude, signs of their quarry start to appear. Barely visible, the grazed ends of grass tufts tell Isak there are musk oxen in the area.
the young marksman Oge scouts the vast terrain. To the untrained eye, it's nothing but frozen valleys and rock-strewn mountains. But experience has taught Oge exactly where to look. And the hunt is on. The Greenlandic name for musk oxen is umimak, or long-bearded one. Their shaggy coats are finer than cashmere and eight times warmer than wool. They live for up to 20 years, feeding on roots, mosses, and lichens. The hunters covet the meat and coat of a 400 kilogram bull. But these great beasts don't surrender easily. It's not in their nature to run, as they'd quickly overheat. Instead, as the hunters approach, they form a defensive huddle. Two of the excitable dogs are cut loose. In times gone by, the dogs would have helped make the kill, but today they draw the bull's aggressive attention and keep the herd huddled while Oge picks his shot. It's a quick end for the proud animal. The partnership between man and dog has succeeded. Nothing goes to waste, and the dogs share in the reward of the hunt. In Greenland, as elsewhere, modern man's link to history is through tradition. Isak and Oge live according to the customs of their people. Oge is expected to return to the village as soon as he has enough meat. The rest of the team will head to the coast to continue the hunt. He departs beneath the celestial blessing of a ring around the sun. It's a good omen of new beginnings, appearing with the approach of spring. Okay. In Svalbard, the team of Greenland dogs awakes to their first full day on the ice. Their equipment echoes their modernized life. Lightweight and durable, the whole camp packs onto narrow sleds. With the men on skis to reduce weight further, it takes just two or three dogs to achieve what 10 would with a heavy sled. At last, the dogs have the chance to run. They head inland, where they will cross a great glacier before returning to meet up with the ship. The purpose of the mission is to gain insights into the most efficient methods of movement across challenging terrain. 
innovation and human endeavor have always been at the core of polar exploration. When you're racing against time, efficiency is everything. Different configurations of man, dog, and sled yield different results. But whatever the innovation, the train's engine remains the same, driven by a raw animal energy to match the awe-inspiring surroundings. Legendary Norwegian explorer Otto Sverdrup believed that Greenland dogs had no equal. With the help of 75 of these dogs, he and his crew were able to chart a total of 260,000 square kilometers in the Canadian high Arctic, more than any other polar exploration. In his diary, he hailed the Greenland dogs as ferocious guardians, fighting off polar bears and never yielding. No matter the equipment involved or the goal of the expedition, whether in Canada, Greenland or Svalbard, one truth remains constant. The musher's success depends on the strength and health of his dogs. The right build and a sound gait are essential to a good working dog, and Greenland dogs are physically evolved to be elite athletes. But every musher must know the limits of his team. Sometimes the dogs need a little help to overcome a challenge. After extra exertion, it's paramount for a musher to be aware of his dog's well-being. The best way to recognize when something is abnormal is to familiarize yourself with what is normal. Resting dogs have a respiration rate of 10 to 35 breaths per minute and a heart rate of 60 to 140 beats per minute. Temperature can affect this, but so can emotions like fear or anxiety. A good dog will have the temperament and attitude to match its physical build. And a good musher will instill a sense of calm confidence in his team. In Greenland, this knowledge has been passed down over generations and is coming to the fore. Isak and his team are headed for the coast, where sea ice presents the opportunity for hunting seals. En route, they meet with Akaru who will join the hunt for seals in Oge's stead. Soon after he joins, the team crosses their own tracks made during the storm. Footprints compress snow, leaving the softer powder to blow away. The ghost tracks stand out like porcelain gargoyles. As the team approaches the coast, they cross large chunks of ice, held in place by thin layers of frozen sea. In these circumstances, the musher must retain the respect of his dogs by making good decisions. In turn, he must rely on the dog's instincts to keep him on ice that's thick enough to hold the sled. A far cry from the ordered pairing of modern sledding, the basic rope harnessing may seem haphazard. But there's method to perceived chaos. 
It allows the dogs to spread out across the ice to evaluate the various course options. The ephemeral nature of the ice makes it unpredictable and dangerous, but also mesmerizing. From vast vistas to the small and close, there is beauty on every scale in the Arctic. At the coast, textured layers melt and transform. Blizzards carve and precipitation pastes, slowly adding to the canvas of structures. Beautiful imperfection. As Bor sails the coast of Svalbard, the islands present icy beauty of their own. Glacial meltwater carves out this cave in the ice. Bohr's crew takes advantage of a rare and special opportunity. With the help of basic modern tools, they moor the 80-foot steel vessel to a sheet of ice. This ephemeral floating structure presents all the permanence and stability that the ship needs. Bohr will soon meet with the sled teams as they make their way down to the coast. The work of the adventurer never stops. Isolated in the Arctic with finite resources, every second counts. You're either moving forward, eating, or sleeping. The efficiency with which you can create comfort in the world's most foreboding landscapes is crucial to the success of an expedition. There is an inherent competitiveness in polar exploration. For many, the desire to succeed is built on nationalist sentiment some of Norway's greatest heroes are the polar explorers of the past. But for some, it's more personal. In 1909, American Robert Peary claimed to have been the first man to reach the North Pole. His fellow countryman Frederick Cook disputed this, claiming he himself had reached the Pole a full year earlier. This was the beginning of one of the greatest controversies in polar exploration. Whatever the truth, each relied on Greenland dogs to stake their claim. Cook took 103 dogs. Peary's team was 246 strong. A century ago, it was who can reach the pole first. Today, it's who has the courage to search for new ideas and test known limits. Who will strive to develop that which will inspire people tomorrow. How far and how fast can you travel with only the essentials, powered by the enduring canine energy? With no dead weight, the dogs and musher can combine energy to fly across the ice. Like innovation and preparation, practice like this is at the heart of polar exploration. For Isak and Akaru, there is little vanity involved in the seal hunt.
When a hunter hunts, he engages with the environment as well as his cultural identity. For him, pride comes not from conquering the Arctic, but rather immersing himself in its nature to take from it what he needs to survive. Despite the threat of polar bears, ringed seals are naturally inquisitive. Isak scratches his metal pick on the ice. And a speck soon appears in the rifle sights. Not every shot yields success, and patience is key for hunters and dogs alike. It's only a matter of time until they hit their target. And the kill is instant. To Isak, in both success and failure, it's important to maintain respectful thoughts and behavior towards an animal. Before, during, and after a hunt. The hunters take turns in recovering their quarry. It may seem an ugly business, but it's their survival, and they take only what they need. In Svalbard, Bor awaits the arrival of the team. Eventually, they arrive in good shape and high spirits. The dogs have done their job, and they're eager as ever. This endless enthusiasm has been tapped to push them to their limits, but their work is over for now. set sail to return across the Barents Sea. Through testing techniques and answering questions, the team has added to the continuous evolution of polar expeditions. But while man may help shape the future of exploration, it's the dogs which remain the constant driving force of our endeavors. The dogs have reveled in the running, doing what they were bred to do. Their job done, man and dog alike settle down to await the comfortable predictability of shelter and civilization. In Greenland, after the successful hunt, the dog's work continues as they head off on their own homeward drag. The people of Etokotomi are relying on their swift return. As evening sets in, the hunters come across bear tracks in the snow. After sunset, the mother reveals herself and her cub. It's the last of a litany of spectacles that have graced the hunt.
with the rise of the half moon over Scoresby Sound, Isaac's travels come to an end. He has come back with a rich bounty, but more importantly, his respectful relationship with the natural world intact. On their return, the dogs receive just reward for their effort. This seal is for them. Fat makes up 70% of their diet and provides them with both energy and hydration. Every gram of fat burned yields 1.4 grams of water inside the muscle cells. The seal meat and blubber will restore the energy spent on the long, hard hunt. But unlike the team that has returned to Norway, for these dogs, the work never stops. They are indispensable members of the community, permanently on guard when not hunting, keeping the town safe from the threat of polar bears. With the arrival of spring, the days grow longer. It's bitterly cold, but where just weeks ago puppies met an early demise, a new generation of ice dogs has made it. Future hunts in Otokotomi will depend on these new arrivals. More than 15,000 years of human tinkering have allowed various dog species to evolve to what they are today. This creates an inseparable link between humans and their canine companions. Otto Sverdrup described the Greenland dog as having the persistence and tenacity of a wild animal and at the same time, the domestic dog's admirable devotion to its master. It is the wildest breath of nature and the warmest breath of civilization.